enhanced radiance models by way of ESPR and Wavefront files. This is another in the series of tutorials from Strategies for Deploying Virtual Representations of the Built Environment. To find out more, go to the website. In previous videos, we covered the use of ESPR and Radiance, as well as the use of ESPR and Blender to view models which incorporate the 3D surface characteristics embedded within ESPR models. Have a look at those videos in order to better follow the story. The E2R module of ESPR takes a lot of the hassle out of common visual simulation tasks. It translates the ESPR data model into a set of Radiance files and then coordinates applications within the Radiance suite. Traditionally, the translation of ESPR surface polygons involves creating two Radiance faces, one facing inwards, one facing outwards with relevant surface properties, but they're only separated by a few millimeters. Lots of ESPR models focus on the inside face of the facade, which is a good starting point for internal visual assessments, and the resulting scenes are fit for a range of visual simulation tasks. This traditional approach lacks the depth of facade available in Blender views. In this video, we leverage the use of ESPR and the wavefront object files normally used with Blender to enhance Radiance visual simulations. Let's open up the prior model that we used in the Blender video. And here it is. It's a terrace of houses which have 3D information. Let's change the viewpoint, move that around so that we can get a better rendering. So we're first going to visualization, colored rendered. So we're going to create the radiance model as our starting point. So the E2R module starts up, having been passed the name, we'll work interactively and choose an external image type and we'll look at a spring afternoon. Set to fine resolution texture on the surfaces. Um, we want the floor just slightly above the ground. So let's set that at minus 0.4. Okay, no, I don't want to proceed. I want to set a few things. For example, the viewpoints. Create a new view. It will pick up the current viewpoint. Let's give it a short name. and save that. Let's also go into the scene parameter options. Let's bump the resolution up from 500 pixels to 1000 and turn on penumbras. We'll keep the diffuse reflections at one so that we can quickly view what's going on. Let's render the scene with that view. Standard colors, single time instance onto the screen so we can see the image evolve and double check it. Let's scale this so we can have a look. And it refines away. Let's Let's zoom in a little bit, a bit closer, again. Okay, so that's our basic view. Let's save it into a view file, which we can then import back into our description. So import that view file and type in the name of the file that was just created. That will read that in. And we'll give it a name, same thing but close, and uh, that's reflecting our view. So we'll save that. Okay, now we can quit E2R. 
And let's just move that off to the side. We'll come back to it later. Now we go back and we're going to export the model into Wavefront so that we can have uh, the option of using Blender, but also to use the object file within Radiance. So, no, yes, just include the glazing. I include comments. We don't need millimeter dimensions. Um, yes, use center line if partitions are cloplanar. planar. Mostly or they're not in this model. But it's also going to ask us questions about what we'd want to do with floors and less confirmed floors as we go through. And ceilings if they're also coplanar. But we don't want an individual choice. So we select everything and we'll get this kind of dialogue when we come up with the floors. We want to do the inside face. And we'll carry on with those sorts of, of changes for the various other spaces. Okay, we've exited that. Let's go and look at what we've got in terms of files. Yes, we've got a .mtl and a .obj file that have been created. We want to copy the obj file into the Radiance folder. And then we go into the Radiance folder. And what have we got in here? We've got an object.mat, object materials, and then the Radiance file with the ground plane and the site information, and the RIF file. So we need to edit these two files here. And change a couple of things inside of them. So the RIF file already includes the scene information. And it includes the view that we had previously defined when we created the other uh, RIF Radiance RIP file. So E2R is coordinating these two files, the object.rif and the standard.rif. Now, in the object.rad, we've got ground plane and some other things, but we need to define the mesh. We need to do that by object to mesh command, which is one of the Radiance tools. So let's type that in. Use that command with the material file and then we follow it by the object file and then that is what's going to be out to it is a so-called RTM file. And we have a few warnings um, but 34,000 are statements. Okay, so we then paste that R RTM file into the mesh command within object.rad and now we are able to r run it with SWF as the viewpoint. Now we're going to do this with a rad command, a manual inline of invocation to preview things and we give that a start and It's looking rather much like our previous one. It increases resolution as it goes along. Let's move in a little bit closer and see what's going on in a moment. So it does look subtly different. And we'll quit that. And then we're going to do, use the, do the same thing, but with the close thing. So I'll slightly change the command line and we'll run that. And again, we get the preview, but with the same view that we had before. Now we're getting information in terms of the thickness of the facade, um, which was not apparent in the standard radiance view directly generated by ESVR. 
We can even see the little air brick in the foundation. Now, let's go back and edit the file and give us a little bit better situation for a better rendering. Save that. And we're going to rerun the thing, but in a non-interactive way um, to generate a file. And that'll chunter away. It's not taking too long. We only have, at the moment, one core related to it. It's done the processing. We'll use Ximage, one of the Radiance tools, to look at this. Let's scale it back down to where it's roughly the same size as our prior one. Now, we on the left is the 3D version, on the right, the standard version. So we do have some additional information here um, that might help us for some tasks. These two images show that the additional information is rather in keeping with what we would get in Blender. So, having this overview, I wish you a good journey on your own better Radiance models.